<laughs> there it is. Got it. Okay. We're live. Good morning. It's 1032, and I'd like to call the September 8th, 2022 meeting of the Lackawanna County Regional Planning Commission to order. And with the roll call, uh, I'd like to know, is John Postius available? Is he here? Jerry Carey? Rosemary Broderick? Is Rosemary here? Yes. Oh, is she muted? I didn't hear She's her. She's on mute, yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> okay. Harry Lindsay? Here. Tony Grisanti? Here. And Cindy Campbell? Okay, so and Chet Murley is here. Chet Murley present. Oh, Chet, thank you, Chet Murley. Sorry about that. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> okay, um, now we move on to public comments. Are there any questions or comments um, yeah. on the agenda items only? Yeah, I did receive one request from uh, a gentleman from Elmhurst Township, Joe Musil. So he is on. Uh, he's now for the public. Will we address that question later then? No, he's just listening in. I don't, you awesome. know, if he has any questions, he could certainly bring them up. Very good, okay. Okay, moving on to the minutes. Uh, the minutes for the June 9th, 2022 meeting have been distributed by email to the board. Are there any corrections, additions, or deletions to the document? Seeing none, I ask for a motion to approve the minutes as distributed. So move. Second. I'll second. Thank you. Okay, all in favor, say aye. 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 Any, okay. Any opposed? The motion passes. Okay, we move to the bills. Okay, Mary Liz. Um, we have three months worth. Um, July, August, and September. If anybody has any questions, but they're just our standard, um, our subscriptions. We have uh, Eric is is new to our uh, staff, so he's uh, we signed him up for APA membership. Um, we have a Colts reimbursement through our PennDOT contract. Um, Jess and Bob are taking a saldo course in Luzerne County, and we have conference registration. Myself, Bob. Jess and Eric are all going to the PPA conference in Lancaster, so we have the registration fee. I move to approve the bills. Second. Okay, all in favor, say aye. 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 Any objections or opposition? The motion passes. Now we move to communications. Okay, as you can see, we had quite a few. The overwhelming majority are support letters for, for grant applications. Um, there are three that I want to highlight real quick. The first one is um, letter A, very first one. Uh, the City of Scranton applied for a hazard mitigation grant to do some improvements on the stormwater conveyance system and an, a new um, pump station in the Kaiser Creek watershed that wasn't in our hazard mitigation plan so they had to request an amendment which we supported and it has been approved by Pima and FEMA. Um, letter M Th this is a was just supposed to be a standard notification on an MPDES renewal permit uh, we generally just file them away but there is a, a provision in there if we had any comments DEP would like to hear from us within 30 days now I'm going to turn that one over to Jess because there was uh, some controversy um, looking at this application hello everyone so when we got this application it's a renewal for an MPDES permit um, in reference to a wastewater facility for, if I'm, yeah. please, please correct me if I'm wrong, it used to be the St. Pius Sem Seminary, right? Yes. Okay, and now it is for the Northeast American Diocese of the Malankari Orthodox Syrian Church. Um, the mapping and the information we were provided was a little vague, a um, little difficult to understand. We weren't quite sure which municipality it was in based off of the mapping that we were provided. Um, 
And then the standard land use letter that they filled out kind of had some inconsistencies, um, including whether there was a comprehensive plan, they have it marked as no, um, we do. So I just wrote a letter kind of explaining that we do have these items. Um, and also we weren't quite sure about the jurisdictional, um, what jurisdiction this this area was in. Yeah. So we sent that. I'm sorry, Marilis. That's right. They, 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 I think they indicated on the application it was in Dalton Borough. And when we look at the aerial photo, the actual physical buildings are in West Abington Township. Uh, a part of the property does extend into Dalton. So we were thinking, did they put the wrong municipality down? It probably should have been West Abington. Um, and again, uh, filled out the land use thing saying that we didn't have a comp plan. The township or the borough didn't have a comp plan. The township and the borough didn't have zoning. They basically said no to everything, which the answer should have been yes to everything. So we we didn't comment on that. And, and like I said, that's unusual for us to, you know, they're usually filled out correctly. And then the, anybody else have any comments on that? Okay, and then the last one is uh, letter V under September. And I know we've talked in the last couple of meetings about the planning group up in the Carbondale area that are uh, getting together to do a, hopefully a regional plan and zoning ordinance updates. We have been able to contact everybody except German Borough. Um, we did send them a letter saying, um, you know, we did have the cost estimate written up. We sent them a letter explaining everything to them. One last attempt to request to meet with them. If we didn't hear back from them by the 12th of September, we were moving the project without them. Um, and I will give you an update on that when we get to the uh, old business on that section. And that's it for communication. Okay. And then we have the Act 67 and 68 reviews and Chapter 102 permits. Right, and that's just that's just the list of what we got in the la on the last three months. And again, just standard forms that we fill out. And now we move to old business. I have a question. Oh, I'm sorry. Before you go to old business, uh, okay. uh, right below uh, what you were talking about on on page on page six, is that Highly Associates? Is that the proper name? Highly, yes, yeah. Okay. Yeah. There's Riley Associates and there's also Kylie Associates. Yeah. 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 I never heard of Kylie. I thought that was. I think was... Kylie's out near Lake Wampal Pack. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Okay. So old business. As you can see, we were quite busy with transportation the last three months. Um, we did get our first quarter reimbursement from PennDOT. That's for fiscal year 21-22. Uh, in the process of completing the second quarter invoice, um, I want to give a, a hats off to Chris and John from Luzerne County. They um, developed a, a new uh, program for us to use in Excel where we just populate the first sheet with all of our data and our reimbursement numbers, and then it populates through the other nine uh, sheets that are required of PennDOT. So instead of doing nine individual sheets, we're doing one and it's populating through on the others. Um, I'm in the process of going through that to make sure it went correctly, but it looks like it did at this point. So that should be going to PennDOT next week. Um, and then of course, now that we have this new easy program, PennDOT's throwing a wrench into it by telling us we can no longer use them starting with the um, first quarter for 22-23, which we still have two more invoices under the new, the old system prior to this. But we have to do everything through their SharePoint portal, which Brenda can attest we've had difficulty with in the past. So let's keep our fingers crossed. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, under system planning, we had a lot of virtuals and we had a few in-person meetings. Um, the first one, the four of us, myself, Bob, Jess, and Eric, um, we did a three-part virtual webinar. Um, with the uh, DOTs from the six states that I-81 goes through, and it's about the truck parking, you know, the issues there where there, there's, you know, more trucks than there is parking. Um, so we did, uh, that was very interesting to listen to what some of the states are doing and trying to address this. There's uh, some states that are converting some way stations over to parking areas. 
Some are using message boards. They, some of them have an app where you could look for available parking. Um, there's some private public partnerships going on where they're converting some empty lots that are right off the interchanges for truck parking. Um, there's also a thought about some of these large warehouse facilities that are going up that they dedicate areas specifically for truck parking because a lot of it has to do with the delivery schedule and they're waiting to you know do their deliveries so um, quite interesting and there's actually a national one coming up the end of September Secretary Buttigieg is going to uh, have some comments on that and we're going to listen in on that again to see how the entire country is dealing with the truck parking issues. Um, the next one, um, we participated in an HOP meeting with, with PennDOT and officials from Mayfield and German. And I know Tony might want to chime in on this for, for a, a minute or two. Um, the warehouse facilities that are going in off exit five off the Casey Highway, uh, the traffic study was done as a part of the HOP. Unfortunately, the traffic study only included um, the interchange with the Casey Highway, where they determined that 80% of the traffic um, from the warehouse facilities is going to utilize the Casey Highway, 70% north, uh, southbound, 10% going northbound. The other 20% would be going west on uh, Rushbrook Street and 107. And that was our concern that they did not address that traffic signal uh, at Washington Ave and in Rushbrook Street. So Tony, do you have any updates on that? I know that German was not, you know, was looking into that. Um, I, I know that we, you tried and I tried and they shot us both down. Yes. So um, the only update I really have on that is funny, funny thing is PennDOT sent German a citation to tell them that Bonnie Drive is not permitted. I have no idea why they did that. I could, I could guess, but I'm not going to. But so, <laughs> German is in the process of finding out why PennDOT is asking them after all these years. A road that they built as part of the highway system is now being told you don't have a permit for this road. That's so, funny. but as far as the intersection at, at the Windsor, they PennDOT was not willing to push anybody to study that any further than what they did. Right. So, and yeah, I, I mean, that my own, go ahead. Yeah, I have not heard anything since that meeting, so. And I'm just curious what happens when, if PennDOT pushes the issue that Bonnie Drive is not permitted, if German has to go through that permit process, and then somebody has them add in rapid pallets trucking and the new, the new RLNL carriers that's going up there, if that changes the situation so that that's down the road right and this, this is a kind of unique situation where this development is actually taking place uh in mayfield with a small portion in archibald but the probably the best or the worst impact of it is going to be in german which we're not sure has a say or yeah. not so yeah yep yeah there he lives <clears throat> yep I have a similar scoping meeting on the uh uh, music warehouse off of 502 yet? Not yet, no. Okay, thank you. Not yet. Okay. Yeah. Uh, this is John. I'm sorry I'm late. It's just a whole multitude of things this morning, but I'm I'm finally here. Uh, <laughs> Tony, you know, we had that happen one time. Uh, we there was a development going in on Davis Street, a subdivision with the housing, and PennDOT was insisting we get a permit for McCarthy Street, which has been in existence since probably 1898 or something like that. So a city street. So I, I sometimes every once in a while, they, they get a little bit crazy. So I, I feel for you up there, you know? <laughs> well, we'll see how it shakes out. Well, Tony, they finally dropped it after the longest time. They said we didn't need a permit. You know I mean? It was yeah. like, it was just insane, but the same thing, like you're studying something else. And all of a sudden they say an existing street doesn't have a permit. Like I'm thinking like, wait a minute, you know? So, yeah. Right, right. John, yeah. I don't know. I don't know if you missed it, John, but uh, Tony mentioned that this was put in as a part of the highway, uh, which divided yeah. property. And uh, so it was put in by PennDOT. Tony, yeah, are they collecting are they collecting liquid fuels on it? They do. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, 
apparently they acknowledge it exists. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, um, moving on. Um, Jess, Eric, and myself attended a presentation um, by Jeff Speck on this grant walkability study. A few days later, Bob joined us up at City Hall. We, we met with Jeff and some of his staff. Um, Craig Beavers, the, the assistant city, um, city planner, and some representatives from the county agency on uh, aging. Um, the city's doing a walkability study. Um, very interesting to, to listen in on some of their thoughts. Um, some of the thing, things they're proposing kind of uh, conflict with the bike study. The, big, the specific one is Biden Street, formerly Spruce Street. The bike study is uh, recommending that the traffic be reversed instead of one way inbound. They want it one way outbound. Um, Jeff is recommending two-way traffic on Spruce Street with just the first block coming off the expressway as a one-way inbound. Um, with that being said, designating the, the name, the road after the president, I guess, allows the city to apply for some additional funding for street streetscapes and, you know, some landscaping and things like that. So I don't think that what's going on in the bike study is going to is going to happen. But we are going to have a meeting, sh hopefully shortly, with the bike study people um, to coordinate the walkability study. And there's also a um, Valley Motion is also doing uh, some grant work on a bike and pedestrian loop from the Iron Furnaces up to Naog and then down through um, down through the downtown. So we're going to hopefully try and coordinate all these projects in the future. Yeah, Mary Liz, that uh, that reversing of the traffic on Spruce Street. That's the way it was supposed to be back when right. topics came in way back. But the Globe Store to Russell Preston way back in the day had enough clout to have him reverse it. Right. And if you remember, if you're old enough like me, maybe Harry, that's about <laughs> it. I don't know. Uh, Harry, I'm not saying it in a nice way because we're both in good shape, buddy. Uh, <laughs> there was actually two sets of signals. One like was bagged behind the other one and stuff. So that's not an easy task and very expensive to... Uh, you know, relocate all those signals and everything else if they made that two way. And, and I don't know really how it would work out from a traffic standpoint. So uh, just, just a thought, you know. Right. And some of their suggestions too were to remove some of the street lights and put stop signs in as well. <laughs> and, and some striping on the roads to, to give the appearance that it narrower, narrower so they would slow down and some sharrows for the bikes and you know, it, it's not done. I mean, they're in the process of taking everybody's comments into consideration, but it's going to be interesting to see what what it comes up with. Well, this is going to have to be penned out approved because Biden yes. Street, Linden Street, Adams Avenue and Wyoming Avenue are all state highways in that network down there. So it's going to be, you know, it's going to have to be run by them. And, you know, yeah, yeah. and there work. were penned out people in attendance at the uh, the presentation. So in the traffic unit, probably or. I would assume, yeah, and I know okay. their PR, their PR person was there as well. Okay, thanks, Mary Liz. Yeah. Um, okay, we had the uh, quarterly MPO meeting July sixth down at Luzerne County. Um, quite a fortress trying to get into, <laughs> and, and Bob rode his bike over from his house, and they wouldn't let him park it. They wouldn't. He would. It was his fold up bike. They wouldn't let him take it in. He had a hide it somewhere under a bench. So, you know, not not too uh, pedestrian friendly, um, but um, we did have the meeting down there. Um, the big highlight of that meeting was they did approve the transportation improvement program for 23-26. Um, additional paperwork had to go into uh, PennDOT and FHWA that will be going into effect on October 1st. Our next meeting is October 5th and we have the uh, EMA building secured for that. So we're moving it up to Lackawanna County for the next meeting. Mary Liz, we're going to do that. Is that the one we're doing hybrid? Yes. Okay. Okay, good. Yes. Yes. Okay, perfect. Okay. Um, again, the we participated in the HOP quarterly meeting with PennDOT staff. Again, this is a this is a great uh, opportunity for us to coordinate with PennDOT. Uh, what developments we've seen what they've seen so you know we may have not gotten stuff in that they have already and vice versa so it's just a good idea to kind of keep on the same page with PennDOT. 
Uh, we participated in the July 20th planning partners meeting, uh, basically the same items on the agenda from the previous uh, meeting. Um, they are having their in-person annual, or they're ha actually having their annual meeting in person this year. It was hybrid the last two years. It is going back to State College and that's in the middle of October. Um, Bob, Jess and Eric participated in the HPMS uh, two-day training in Bob and Eric are actually started to, to update the HPMS. That has to be done by the end of November. So we're well underway with that. And actually next week, we're meeting with Pat McVeigh from PennDOT Central Office for our quality review. I believe it's every two years, we have to go out with PennDOT and we kind, they kind of you know, site visit you know, our work. And, and if there's any issues, we address them then. So we're gonna be doing that next Wednesday. What's HPMS? Uh, highway monitoring, highway performance monitoring system. Oh, okay, thanks. Yeah, and it's basically inventorying. Um, Bob, do you want to give a real quick on that? It's basically like intersection street lights, but he could give you a better. Yeah, they send us information on different segments of road, and we go out and check how many, how many through lanes, how many turning lanes in each direction, how many intersections, stop signs, stop lights, what kind of stop lights, uh, what kind of curb, the median, all that. Mm -hmm. So when you say what kind of stoplights, do you get the opportunity to program some of the stoplights, make a recommendation to them to uh, program them for, um, you know, traffic rather than just on and off? Uh, no, no, we're just checking to see, is it, uh, do they have cameras there, sensors, are they just on a timer? It's just kind of keeping their database up to date. Mm -hmm. is what it is. It's kind of like spot checks in certain areas to make sure that what they have is actually what's on the on the ground. Mary Liz, didn't we do a few years back um, where we looked at all the street um, lights in Scranton and synchronized and reset and all of that? Wasn't that a project we had done once before, I believe? It sounds familiar. It sounds familiar. I, so. I wasn't involved, but it does sound familiar. Yeah, yeah Mary, uh, Brenda, you're correct. Uh, it was called the downtown, the CBDG signal project. It was 100% federally funded and ended up being something like 48 intersections. It kind of even got out of the downtown, uh, spread out Wyoming Avenue, uh, past prep even. There was a signal, you know, and then uh, went up Music Street, uh, did the one at Meadow and, uh, and River. And but there was an update to all the signals at that time, you know. Did, right. did, they, did they carry that update out or? That was it did to the tune of something like eight or nine million dollars, Chet. It was a big, huge project. Good. Yeah, I think Chet, that's what you were going, you were asking about, and I, I so clearly it's it's a huge undertaking, but yes. probably something that needs to be done in other areas as well. Yeah, and with that cost, uh, a lot of the a lot of the poles were left in place, and just the heads replaced. You know what I'm saying? And uh, yes. it wasn't a complete hundred like. It probably would have been a lot more, but uh, it there's still some. I think there's still some tweaks that have to be done, but that's what all the other studies going on. Maybe some of these walkabilities and other studies will kind of maybe bring something in there and maybe something. But it was a good project. It did do a big update. It was 100% federally funded. Interesting. Okay. Um, okay, moving on. Um, let's see. Um, Brenda and myself attended a hybrid meeting sponsored by the chamber. That was on August 7th. Um, and that was to, uh, there was a representative from the state there just outlining the different uh, programs through the IIJA, which is the new infrastructure bill uh, that was just passed. So, um, you know, some pro programs that PennDOT is ha having, uh, DEP, the uh, broadband, uh, we went through all the different funding opportunities. Uh, it was a very informative meeting. And I think the state also is planning to put on their website a link to those opportunities as well. I'm not sure if it's up yet, but that's their intention. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Okay, mentioned previously about Valley in Motion and their bike and pedestrian loop. Again, uh, they're playing for some grant money, go from the Iron Furnaces up through um, Laurel Line, up Ridge Row, up that way through the university, and then up to Neog, and then back down to the downtown. So uh, we're participating, you know, with them and as they move on with this uh, uh, this thing. And I did give them some information on the new, some of the funding through the IAJA that they, they might qualify for. So they were going to look into that. 
Uh, Bob completed functional class. We have some mapping that has to go along with it. Um, Steve has that, and we, we have some questions on that, so we have to contact Chris to find out exactly what we, uh, Chris down in Luzerne County, that is, because they did theirs already, and find out exactly what we need to do on the maps that would go to that, depend on. Last time that was updated was the after the 1990 census, so it, it was well overdue. Um, so hopefully we're going to have that to pend out shortly. Uh, Mary Liz, uh, did uh, a lot of classifications change? That's the one where you go from like major arterial and right. all that. The right. minor. Bob, to Bob, do, you, do you have a, an idea on that? Because uh, there was something like 307 miles of road changed. I think it was 100 or so miles upgraded and 190 something downgraded, 195 okay. or so. Good job. Thank you, guys. Okay, um, speaking of some of the IIJA opportunities, there's a grant program coming out called Safe Streets for All, the SS4A, that's directly to um, the feds, federal highways. Um, it is for um, like multimodal infrastructure improvements. Um, the, the catch there is you have to have an action plan in place before you could apply for money for the infrastructure. So there was a part of that um, minimum of 200,000 that you could apply for to do the action plan to uh, inventory the, uh, you know, the intersections and what needs to be addressed. So Eric and Sandy from our office uh, put that together. And if Eric, you want to just give them a, a quick update on that. Uh, yeah, so we're fully applied for it now, but um, the action plan, all it really required was for us to collect some data and say that we'd like to conduct the action plan in the future. So um, that's it. Our, our numbers fall in line with the average of Pennsylvania for the most part, as far as um, what they're looking for, for count of motor vehicle involved, like fatalities and serious injuries. So I don't see why we wouldn't be eligible. So we're just waiting on that. Right. And, and it was kind of like... It, here it is and it's due within a month. So we kind of had to hurry up and get it together. Um, this is the first round. I, this is going to be around for a while though. I think there's what, five years and $5 million or $5 billion or. Yeah. And if we're uh, awarded this funding, then we'll have more opportunity to continue through the sure. program for the implementation and, and move on from there. So. Right. There should right. be more opportunity. Right. And if we don't get the funding this time, um, Luzerne County is interested. We may reapply down the road as as the MPO wide instead of just individual counties. We may get you know more favorable a larger group. So we're just waiting and seeing. Okay, and that's it for transportation. Um, moving on to SAPA, we actually had an update meeting on September first. Um, some of the municipalities that are already adopted are getting a little nervous. They, you know, they're still using their old ordinances and they're having some issues. Um, we had one municipality actually, uh, you know, if we didn't give them an idea of what was going on, they were gonna go out and find a consultant to start project over again and redo their ordinance with somebody else. Um, we kind of, you know, calmed them down, got this meeting together. Um, we did have representatives from Scranton and Dunmore on the, on the meeting, um, Scranton is, hopefully working it all out um, with their intent that it's all wrapped up by the end of the year. Um, Dunmore has agreed that once Scranton advertises to adopt that they would reintroduce it to council. They were waiting, you know, to see what Scranton was doing. Scranton is definitely moving. They're just moving a little slowly. So we hope to have Scranton and Dunmore on board, hopefully right after the new year, but wrap this whole project up finally. Mary Thank Liz, you, uh, Mary Liz, uh, I, why I don't know why because I attended enough of them in my heyday. But uh, I watched the council meeting on Tuesday night, and Council President Kyle Donahue, when questioned on this, said that he plans on bringing it back up for a public hearing in October and moving on with the ordinance. So the yeah. big hang up seems to be the only real issue is the CMC development yep. up there. Yep. Uh, there have been some meetings. I'm just taking what they was said at the council meeting by various council people. Uh, Dr. Rothschild attended some meetings with the hospital and the neighbors. Hospital seems to be working with the neighbors. At least they're being forward with, with some kind of planning. So Kyle, Kyle said he 
He wants to bring, he's going to have a second public hearing just for the sake of honesty. On the, and Donnie, basically, he told you, he's basically got all the, uh, let's say, the, the small stuff corrected in an amendment form. Mm -hmm. uh, so it, it's looking good. I mean, it, I don't see why it wouldn't pass. I don't know who's going to be happy with the final version up around the hospital, but I think you're going to get an ordinance passed, like you said, sometime, uh, I would say, late October, November, you know what I mean? Hopefully, yeah, yeah, hopefully. Yeah. yeah, that. Yeah, Donnie did say that. And we kind of just said, well, we'll, you know, we'll give them till the end of the year or, you know, just in case something comes up, but they are definitely, you know, moving on it. That's what I, it, it looked like there was internal and external movement on the ordinance, you know? Right. Uh, okay, moving on, the Scranton and New York passenger rail, uh, again, no activity, we realize Amtrak is kind of taking the reins on this, and we're just waiting to hear what's going on, but we have not heard anything yet. Uh, hazard mitigation, the state is finalizing their applications to uh, FEMA. We had some more information that we had to send them once again. This has been going on since January. Um, still has not gone to FEMA. Hopefully, that'll be going shortly. Um, the funding is from COVID money, so there is no local match. So we definitely, you know, took the opportunity to uh, apply. I've also been asked by uh, Pete Wolfhurst out at Penn State Extension in Pike County to uh, participate in a webinar on the hazard mitigation planning process. There's going to be a representative from Westchester University talking, and also our consultant vision planning is going to uh, participate as well in that. And that is in uh, November the 16th. Um, moving on to the other planning group, the NORLAC group, um, we were able to meet, again, with six out of the seven municipalities. They all agreed to participate in the cost estimate, which we, which we were able to uh, obtain. Um, we're looking at about a $200,000 project with all seven municipalities. $90,000 would be from a stamp grant that the city of Carbondale would be applying for. $50,000 would be coming from DCED's MAP program, um, the county we contributed about 10,000. And then the other remaining, uh, the city of Carbondale is committing 10,000 under the stamp grant program. And then the remaining 40,000 was divvied up among the other six municipalities based on the formula, uh, square miles, population and assessment value. So the highest number that came in was like just over 10,000 for Greenfield Township, which is the largest municipality land wise. Um, they do have a large population uh, considering that group. And then they also have the highest assessment value out of the six. So the lowest one was Vandling, which came in at just under 3000. Um, again, a bargain for all these communities. Um, we have meetings set up with um, Carbondale Township, Greenfield Township, uh, Mayfield and German within the next month. Uh, we're still waiting to hear back from Fell and Vandling to get on their agendas as well to uh, iron out any questions. Um, German uh, kind of was not wanting to participate. Um, Diana Campbell, the council president from Mayfield, um, got on the phone yesterday because they're they're so excited about this. They you know they they can't see any negatives. Um, she called up Frank Kulik, the council president from German, and, and basically said, "You really have to do this." So we don't understand why you don't want to participate. Um, I mean, you're getting your zoning ordinance updated, and you know you're and the cost for them would be just under six thousand dollars over a two year period. So I think uh, having the neighbor municipality contact them and it kind of uh, push them into you know, setting up a meeting with us so they could hear us out. And hopefully it sounds positive at this point. And that is it for old business. Okay. Just, I just have one head. I just have one heads up. Uh, back on that Rushburg Creek flood project, uh, just the four year information. The original high pressure gas line when natural gas was introduced in the 50s goes through Rushbrook Creek and that flood uh, 2000 plus whatever it was that line was exposed in seven different places. Originally that line fed all of Lackawanna and Luzerne County with no redundancy. Now there is some redundancy in there but 
relocation of that line is is going to be very costly and it's going to take uh, some time. So that's just an FYI. You could, uh, I'll, I'll, if you want to call me on on anything, or I'll I'll connect you with the right people. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Chad. Okay, moving to uh, new business. Okay, and I'm going to turn this over to Jess. Um, we have about eight, I think, to go through. I, I know we had three months worth of work. So um, Jess and Bob did all these, and we're going to start on page uh, 14, and I'm going to turn it over to Jess, and she can take it from here. All right, everyone. I'd like to start on page 14, like Mary Liz said. This is for the Archbold Dollar General. This plan came in on June 14. So this is one of our earlier ones. Um, there was a, a subdivision, including some um, lot line adjustments, um, all for the purpose of constructing a 10,793 square foot Dollar General. Um, my comments start on page 15. And a lot of these comments had to do with some landscaping concerns. Um, there were some concerns about off-street loading and then also signage. Um, the signage that they proposed was not an allowed use in that zoning district. Um, now, those comments were returned and then we actually received a revised plan and this is on page 51. I'm sorry if I'm skipping around a little bit, but we received the revised plan on July 25th. And in that plan, they addressed all of the concerns um, and they included information indicating that they're going to apply for a variance for that signage. And again, that was on page 51 and 52. So we feel like that's a, it's a good outcome for this project. And then moving right along, I would like to go to page 32. This is Whispering Pines, phase two in Taylor. This is the proposed development of two 36 unit apartment buildings. That's 72 units total. And then they're also proposing a community center. Um, this is another project where I had quite a few comments, but they did come in and supply a revised plan later on. My primary concerns with this first plan um, were really in reference to some some code requirements that I just wasn't sure which way the governing body would choose to go. Specifically, this is item number three. Um, there's one section that indicates that maybe there is some open space that's required. And then there's another section of the code that could apply where maybe open space isn't required. Um, also relative to parking, there's different parking calculations if that clubhouse is a private membership clubhouse, which I assume that it would be, I'm just not sure, um, as opposed to a clubhouse that's maybe open to the public as a restaurant, something like that. Now, as I said, they did come back with a revised plan in early August, and that starts on page 59 through page 60. And the engineer, when they supplied the revised plans, they supplied a narrative indicating that um, the municipality has preliminarily, preliminarily approved the plans, um, that they're comfortable with everything, and their narrative did address all of the comments in the or original review. And then I'm so sorry, bear with me one moment. And then Bob, I think I jumped a little bit. Would you like to talk about Jack Jr. in South Abington? Yep. Yeah, sure. That's uh, page 16 and 17. Uh, so Jack Jr. And, uh, Inc., they are looking to uh, build a warehouse uh, on a, a lot with three existing structures. Um, they had no parking calculations um, and we weren't sure if they're sharing with existing or the existing structures or not, uh, whether, you know, that would still meet the requirements. Um, the, the plan has what appears to be a few parking spaces behind the proposed uh, construction, but I'm not 100% sure they're parking spaces because they're 
they're all different angles and different uh, different depths, different lengths. Uh, and it also shows that area on the plan is paved, but looking at aerial ph photography that's more recent than the plan shows it is all gravel. And the zoning ordinance says off street parking has to be paved. Okay, go ahead, Jess, you could pick up. Okay, awesome. And Bob, I'm so sorry. I, um, I got carried away with my reviews and I skipped the Mayfield Logistics Center. Would you like to continue with that one? Sure. Uh, so this was just a sketch plan. It's not, uh, so there was no recommendation for or against. Um, so it's right at the uh, border of Archibald and Mayfield. Uh, they're looking to construct one uh, distribution facility in each uh, municipality. Uh, the plan does not list the Archibald zoning information. Uh, it does on the, uh, on the vicinity map show the Archibald location as being zoned for I-2. Uh, Archibald zoning map on their website lists it as uh, interchange activity center, uh, which doesn't allow warehousing or distribution centers. So uh, I'm not sure if they're going to request that the area be rezoned or you know, what their plan is. Uh, and also the floor area on the plan uh, doesn't match uh, when you add up the individual buildings. Um, they're about 20,000 square feet off. And this is that same project that we had the HOP meeting on for the tra uh, for the traffic study mm -hmm. off of exit five. Yeah. And again, that was just a sketch plan. They're looking to get some input from the municipalities before they uh, move forward with their, you know, with their designs. Okay, Jeff. Awesome. Thanks, Bob. Um, the next one that I'd like to talk about is on page 41. This is page 41 and 42. Lands of Garulo. This Giralo, is I think it's pronounced. Giralo. Giralo, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> this is a, it's a propo proposed subdivision and or consolidation. Unfortunately, um, this plan was a little bit difficult for us to understand and figure out what was going on. Um, item number one kind of explains why that was confusing. It's kind of hard to, to understand without physically seeing the plan, but basically um, there, there was no legend. Um, some of the, the changes between what was in the narrative and what was actually shown on the plan, they didn't match up. Um, deeds were supplied for properties that were not involved. Um, when looking at the plan, it was just very confusing. Um, so really the majority of my comments here are just in reference to that, how to make the plan a little more understandable, make sure that everyone is on the same page with that. Now I did, um, you see number seven, I did recommend conditional approval. And that's simply because when you look at the lots, the sizes are all listed, everything looks like it is compliant, but truly I'm not comfortable saying recommending approval because we're not entirely sure that we have the whole scope of the project on the plan. That is that one. And Bob, then this would go back to you if you don't mind for the property in Bell Township for September? Sure. Uh, so the lands of Bifano, Bifano, I'm not sure how to pronounce it, Bifano. but uh, page 71. Uh, so this is a subdivision of a lot with an existing uh, dwelling and an office building. Uh, so the only issue I saw was that the plan lists the wrong zoning district. It lists it as R2 and it should be C2. Um, and going off the C2, lot requirements, uh, the dimensional requirements. It, the second lot is just under the minimum lot width requirement. Uh, it's 186 feet wide and it needs to be 200. Um, not sure if they're requesting a variance. I think Mary Liz had said it will probably get approved. Yeah, they're two existing structures, so you yeah. really can't do anything you know, about it. Um, the zoning district, uh, the surveyor, Henry Tusar, I, I <laughs> I think he's using an ordinance that's, you know, three decades old that, that he just hasn't updated and he just doesn't want to update. So every time we get something in from Bell Township, it seems it's in the wrong zone or the wrong setbacks. And, and it's simply because he's using the wrong ordinance. Okay, I think we're good. Then Jess. All right, thanks, Bob. Um, 
The last project that I wanted to talk about is on page 89. It's toward the end of your packet. This is Lands of Slibco. Um, it's in Jessup in the Valley View Business Park. So this project, it was um, the creation of some conservation parcels and then the separation of a lot 19 um, from one of those conservation parcels. Um, this plan was a bit of a struggle for, for myself, um, but I'm blessed to have a wonderful team that we could sit down and talk about it. Um, again, this was another one that was a little bit confusing to us. There was, there was no legend, there was no location map, um, there was no overall site plan to show us what areas were actually being changed, um, no natural features map. And there was a section of what is currently considered, um, well, what would be an area of the conservation parcel that is across the street. So Valley View Drive goes directly between. That area is not really shown on the plan. You can see the beginning of it. So I'm not sure if they're trying to separate that off, whether it's going to maintain um, the connection to the existing parcel, not quite sure. Um, so that's where we that's where we stand with that one. And those are all the ones that I've highlighted for, for our discussion. Yeah, does anybody have any questions on anything we didn't go over? Yeah, Mary Liz, there was one, it seemed to have a lot of similar comments. It was it was a project down in Music. It was a, a, a warehouse or a shed that was going to be put on a lot. There was a lot of questions about what it was going to be used for and different other things. It just seemed you know, a little bit strange, like, oh. like, was that Rinaldi? Yeah, I think it referenced yeah. gone auto yeah. sales and it, it was just kind of confusing to me reading okay. it, you know? Jess, do you want to, let's see if we can pull that one out. Sure. Let me see if I can find the page in my packet here. Bear with me a few moments. Thank you. Of course. Fifty-seven, Jess. 57. Oh, fifty-seven. Yep. Okay. Good eye. Thank you. Okay. So this property is right next to um, Calarusos, and on Bernier Avenue. Um, right now, it, according to the aerial imagery, it looks like it's a vacant parcel that has some existing storage units on it. I'm not sure what's in there. I think there used to be car sales in there. Um, and in that district, the, the plan itself said for personal storage. And I just had some concerns over what kind of storage was existing on the lot um, because it is in an M district. Mm -hmm. and I'm so sorry, I'm browsing over my comments now to try to remind myself. Um, but it was just an odd lot. It was an odd plan to get, especially for something like personal storage in this M zone where we already have these sheds or maybe one kind of looked almost like a, a shed that had a lean-to next to it, maybe for the storage of a car, like a carport um, situation. And this is the parcel that butts up against the turnpike too, to the north, right? The turnpike? Yes, this I believe so. Turnpike. And then Color Russo's to the south of yes. Bernie Avenue, and then probably the Northeast Extension right away, like behind it, too. Uh, it just seemed odd. I mean, I, it's, it's fine. I mean, I'm sure it's. Uh... John, they're storing uh, fencing on site right now, outdoors. And yeah, okay. Building this facility to actually take and put it indoors. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I went it's, it's an improvement in what's there now. Yeah, I went to high school with Bob Rinaldi. I think they still own the lot, the Rinaldi family. I just it just seems strange, like there was some questions, but you know, I'm sure the borough will work through it and get everything, yeah. you know, done. Yeah. Yeah, personal storage was kind of an odd, an yeah. odd uh, title. They were like, what's personal? You know, furniture or household supply? Like we, we I that's what they told us to move that. I mean, I'm uh, fine. I don't like that. It's a little strange, but you know, I'm sure it'll all work out. An improvement from what's there now again. <laughs> Get cleaned up, Harry? Yeah. Very good. 
Any other questions then? Okay, Carol, I guess we need to approve. Okay. I would ask for a motion to recommend approval of the reviews for the end of June, July, August, and September. So moved. Second. Cindy seconded. We got a second? Cindy. Cindy. <laughs> oh, thank you. Okay. Um, any uh, any uh, opposed? Oh, I'm sorry. All in favor, say aye. 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 All, um, any opposition or any opposed? The motion carries. Uh, Carol, just a second. I would like to thank the staff. These reviews are excellent. I mean, they're really in depth. They're really, you know, I've been around a long time and I really enjoy reading this stuff here because you guys really take your time to look into the projects and, you know, uh, and uh, you should be commended for the, the great effort that you put into these reviews, you know, because it's only recommending and I was trying to explain this to my wife because she's saying, what are you reading? I said, I'm reading my agenda for tomorrow. And she, I said, well, Kathy, the big thing is uh, you could deny the project and the local municipality could approve it, just slam dunk it right through. So, but I said, the county takes its time and they really, they do a good review. So congratulations to everybody that worked on these. Very nice job. I'll second those comments. I agree. Yes, I'd like to thank everyone also. Great job, guys. Fantastic. Yep. Got a really good show there. Yep. We good finally, team. we we have a great staff right now. I'm I'm thrilled. I'm thrilled. I agree, Mary Liz. Yep. I do. We have a wonderful team in place and we're yep. grateful for all that you do. Thank you. Uh, of course, it looked like you went to a lot of meetings, though. I was wondering if anybody <laughs> was in the all summer. Well, <laughs> most of them were virtual, so we were sitting here at our desk. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> we're getting used to these virtual meetings. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and while we're on that, we we're as long as we're allowed to, we're going to continue them to the end of the year, and then decide next year what we want to do, just so we don't have to re-advertise uh, and spend the money for a new legal ad. So gotcha. okay, stick with that Great. for now. Um, real quick though, before if there's any other public comment or adjourned uh, under new business, there are two conferences going to be in Scranton next fall. Um, the Greenways and Trails Conference is in September, and then the uh, APAPA Conference is in October. Um, we are on the planning committees for both of those conferences, so we're going to be busy over the next year. Um, and Cindy, if you want to say, I know Cindy's co-chair of the, the planning conference, if you just want to say a word or two. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, we have it again in Scranton because of 2021 went virtual because of COVID. So they gave us another conference. Uh, we're in the process of um, putting the committee together. Um, some of the people who were on the original committee um, just are not interested in being on it again, but we, we're getting there. We're getting a committee set up. And Harry, if you're interested, please let me know. Um, our first meeting is of the conference committee is going to be October 15th at the NEPA offices in Pittston. And, um, you know, we're moving along. We're going to, we had some people, uh, including some of the staff here, uh, are willing to uh, co chair or chair some committees or subcommittees. Um, we're still working on that and putting it all together. One of the requirements, as per the chapter, is that we have to have diversity in our speakers this year. Um, so um, we will work on that, but um, certainly. Uh, once we get some program topics put together, we will be looking for input from um, this staff and from other people as far as um, speakers um, for some of those uh, topics, because we have to, it's a requirement now we have, have to have diversity in our speakers. So, so we're um, looking forward to having it again in the Scranton area. Yep. And then again, this year it's in Lancaster. We are going, we have a basket. Uh, Kate McMahon and myself and Jess are working on a basket that we're gonna bring down um, uh, for the raffle for the uh, the planning scholarship fund will be for that. So we're donating that. Cool. And that's all I have, Carol. Okay, um, is there any public comment? Yes. Uh, Chet Murley speaking as the chairman of the Blakely Boro Planning Commission. D.R. Horton came into our meeting this week. Uh, they are the largest home builders in the United States and they're proposing to develop a tract of land. There's not a lot of tracts 
of land left in Blakely Borough. And it, it boils down to, we, we gave them two options. They came in with a sketch plan, not preliminary. And, the, and they are faced with, when they left, two separate options. And one is in a residential subdivision, they wanna shrink the size of, of the frontage on a lot from 80 to 60 feet in an R1 zone. And their other option was to go into the uh, planned residential development, which is uh, new to our ordinance since it was uh, revised uh, a few years ago. And that allows them to have uh, govern and choose the size, the frontage of their lot uh, that has to meet a, a certain square footage and allows them to mix the use with uh, uh, multifamily actually. And it also allows them certain commercial um, in, inside that subdivision. So they gave, we left them with choices and um, we're not big on setting a precedent in an R1 zone to shrink the size of our lot, which is even below R2. <laughs> but I did tell them that our, you know, uh, the zone hearing board has, is, has set some precedents in the past. So whatever way they choose, it's going to be interesting. And it's for over a hundred homes. And where's the at? Where's the? Right, right above Hospital Street. When you go, just go continue to Hospital Street where it's undeveloped. It almost extends to Route 6. It actually, Absolutely, yeah. yeah okay. Some of the lots actually uh, are split between an R1 and a C1. And so what's the name of the company again? Uh, Dr. Horton, and Thank it's you. just a comment. I, I don't, I don't know if you want to put it in the minutes, but it's just a comment that they are the largest home builder in the state of uh, Pennsylvania. They, they're, they're, you know, they were big in New Jersey for the last few years, and they're starting to move into Pennsylvania. So I thought, I thought people might be interested in that. No. And a hundred lots, you said? Wow, a hundred and eight. And if they go with the uh, PRD. It could be as much as 122. Wow. I didn't think there was that much land up there. <laughs> well, you, you know, again, they have a business model and their business model is, um, it's, it's unique. They, they're not going to develop and sell lots. They're going to build according to what they stated and their engineers stated, they're going to build 24 homes a year and they're only gonna sell the homes. They're not selling any lots. They only have a few models that you can choose from like a, a ranch or a two story um, and, and that's it. And you have no input into your home. You can't say, I'd like to make this change. I'd like to, there's, there's no changes. You, know, you go in and you buy the house that's already built. Hmm. So is it like a, a prefab that's placed or are, are they constructing no, it on the site? They're all stick built and they will use local contractors. That's they will good. use, but the local contractors have to make commitments. They will use the local realtor network. They're not, they're not, you know, they do have their own realtors, but they're, they're going to use their, their, the realtor network. And, um, and they're going to hire people uh, for uh, management positions. So I, I thought I would share that with the body. It's quite interesting. It's different than, than any subdivision that I've seen. Yeah, thank you. For thank you. Can I on that? Yeah. Any other comments or questions? Okay. Uh, seeing none, I look for a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Chet. Second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? <laughs> Motion carries. Thank you all. What a, a great job, everyone. And I thank you all. Hope you had a wonderful summer and looking forward now to, to the uh, autumn season. We'll see you at the next meeting then. Yep. Okay. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye.